Today's Meta Monday episode won't feature a deck profile. Frankly, with all the content that I've been churning out in the last week, this week will be a little bit more relaxed and may only feature one or two uploads. Everyone needs a break, and at the same time, you gotta be careful of burnout. Today's video is going to be a short discussion, looking back at the six major events since the release of Special Booster 2.0. All data was pulled from EggmanEvents.com, so if you're looking to get more insight on the top decks that won, and which events I'm referring to, you can refer to the website in the description below. While the Special Limited set introduces a few cards, frankly, I don't think they are enough to create drastic changes after looking at last week's event's results with Play TCG's December Online Ultimate Cup. My reasoning for using the data for the last two months is to ultimately look at a broad spectrum statistical analysis of what kind of representation you could see, and ultimately, what decks you might consider testing more against as they placed higher. The first event occurred on November 9th, 2024, and the latest event on December 14th, 2024. And starting from the bottom up, there were several decks that only made an appearance one time. With six top 16s here, this means that out of the 96 deck profiles, these decks have an overall appearance of approximately 1%. Decks like Birds, Shine Greymon, Bloom Lordmon, Blue Hybrid, and Rapid Mon X. I give huge props to the players who topped with these decks, because in a way, you are an underdog and willing to take on the meta with something unconventional. And because of this, I anticipate out of the players heading to Nationals, 5% of players will likely be doing so if not a little bit more. Bringing something rogue that is unknown to other players may be what causes them to misplay due to the unfamiliarness of combos. The next couple of decks only appeared at a frequency of two times each out of the 96 deck profiles. You had Beelstar, Galactic Mon, Seven Great Demon Lords, and D Brigade. But what exactly gives these matchups a competitive edge? Beelstar Mon, for example, has a lot of removal potential. And since you're rarely playing any Digimon, it has decent matchup against the more frequented decks in this video. Galactic Mon, likewise, has an answer for one of the most important resources in the card game in the form of Tamer Removal. Because of Destromon, being able to eliminate Tamers is huge in certain matchups, especially if it's Hybrid or the Ancient Play. Seven Great Demon Lords has answers to so many decks by D-Digivolving, Deletion, and more. Making choices without really making choices. It's pretty obnoxious. And of course, D-Brigade is really fun with just Board Swarm. More and more decks feel like they're on Ruin Mode than Death Exmon, which already creates requirements to get there. But once you clear those 1%ers, 2%ers represented decks, this is where we start seeing some different numbers. Fenrir Lugamon and Three Great Angels saw representation at 4 decks each, and these are popular decks in which you either clear a lot of security really fast, or build a giant wall with potential disruption. Lordite Mon X is one of the more interesting decks at a 6.3% overall representation, because in Japan it saw a lot of play. But here, the real purple deck contender is higher up the food chain. Ancient Greymon and Galaxy decks are some of the big heavy hitters too. Ancient Greymon in particular could be viewed similarly to Fenry Lugamon with its OTK potential. The difference is, Ancient Greymon is less trash reliant and more reliant on tamers in play. Galaxy, we've seen back-to-back -back weeks where this deck is a menace and can cut off your opponent from even simply searching. But with the last four decks to talk about, Imperial Dramon ultimately has good support in the meta, but it feels like it ultimately loses to Bricking. And this deck is nothing to scoff at, because this deck did appear in the finals in Europe. Interestingly, the first place deck in the event was Mirage Galgamon. It has the means to be very consistent, control the board, and has OTK potential. But this deck still wasn't the top dog deck in all the events because out of the six major events, it only took first place one time. That being said, out of the 96 deck profiles, it was seen nine times and represented almost 10% of decks in the data pool. The second most frequent deck seen in all these events was Magnamon X. And there's no denying that Magnamon X is a powerful deck. With some preliminary testing that I've been doing, even utilizing a blue scramble to return Vimon into the battle area to go into your starter deck Magnamon is hilarious. Or even worse, if your opponent hits blue scramble, then into the Magnamon. Magnamon X would encompass about 15.6% of the decks for these top 16 events overall and would win not just once, but twice. Despite the representation of Magnamon X in these last six events, 
The number one deck that had the highest representation was Purple Hybrid at 17.7%. Keep in mind that when I define a deck as Purple Hybrid, I'm loosely lumping it all together regardless of top ends because they'll all use the same type of engine. Some Purple Hybrid lists run the Mervamon top end for the alternate win condition of milling your opponent out, while others incorporate Dark Masters and more. Now with all of this data, we can readily make more assumptions on what players are likely to bring. Let's say for the sake of being general here, that 15% of applicants for the Bandai Card Games Fest will bring Purple Hybrid and Magnemon X. Let's say 10% bring Mirage Galgamon, and about 7% of players bring Galaxy, Ancient Greymon, and Lord Nightmon X. And for the sake of easy math, let's say that the deck that represents 5% will be 3 Great Angels, Fenry Lugamon, and Leviamon X. Realistically, I think 7 Great Demon Lords would also be in this overall composition. In total, this means that we've calculated roughly 81% of the decks that would be at Bandai Card Games Fest, with the remaining 19% being miscellaneous decks of various types. And the reason for this video is again to estimate potential representation of what could be seen at Bandai Card Games Fest Orlando. Because if your deck is one of those top categories, realistically is your matchup good or bad against some of the others? Or is it literally a coin toss? Despite Purple Hybrid's heavy representation in this data, it never won first place. In the past, my recollection of 2022 Nationals, in which Black War Grand 1X was heavily favored to win the event, represented almost 30% if not more of the decks that year. But because our format is so diverse, I don't think it's necessary that far off of what we could expect. In closing, I hope this video helped give you some insight on some anticipated numbers that we could see at the event. And I look forward to seeing you all there, because I am happy to announce that I will be one of the casters for Play TCG this year at Bandai Car Games Fest Orlando. My co-caster will make his or her own announcement separately, and I look forward to seeing you all there. This is Digipanda, logging out.